Hello. I'm Alexis. I'm Christina. And we are Pit Pit a Pad. They were like, you were like up here in the octave, and I was like down here. Pit Pit. Yes. We should start a we should start like a choir. <laughs> Oh my god. So retail. <laughs> About Actually, retail. What constitutes as like retail? Like could a grocery store be considered like retail? Um that's my question. Because I feel like people talk about retail, but it's like I feel like the best way to describe it would be more like a customer service job. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, definitely, I think the retail point of retail is to complain about your problems at retail. So <laughs> I think if you're talking about the problems within retail, it's definitely like on the lines of, you know, Karens and coming in and asking for returns, even though they can't be returned. And um, um, actually, that's a really, really kind of fine line because you can return food food service, but does food service count as retail? But does huh? I'm gonna like look this up. I need to look this definition up. What do we got here? Okay, it says retail is the sale of goods to the public in relatively small quantities for use or consumption rather than for resale. So I I guess. Yeah, I guess a grocery store is a retail store because you're just selling goods for consumption. Hmm. But technically, if you were a scammer, you could resell anything that you bought from like a clothing store or like a food store. You can. And I mean, like when it comes to like wholesale markets, like where I worked at, it's mostly just kind of like you have everything there like you have like clothing there you have things in bulk you have stuff that's not in bulk mm -hmm. you have like furniture and flooring and it's a bunch of stuff that you actually can like buy which technically counts as retail but then wholesale supermarkets are technically supermarkets so supermarkets oh that, that's that's a good question <laughs> didn't mean to make it so deep I was just confused because I was like whenever I hear the word retail the first thing that comes to mind is like a clothing store but yeah definitely yeah. the first thing that comes to mind is like a target yeah yeah you're right in conclusion retail sucks oh, yes <laughs> yes customer service jobs in general just really suck they should not exist. Uh, but I mean, as a consumer myself, I prefer to talk to like an actual person over like a robot. So, so true. Uh, I don't know. I think they're needed. But also like as a person who has done retail before, I absolutely hate um, having to just breathe. Like just to stand there and breathe. People will just be like, so you're breathing? <laughs> like so you're so you're giving you're talking yeah they're offended right by your breath <laughs> like literally that's the thing that's why i'm like kind of grateful that i work in the deli that i do because it becomes less of a stressful environment when you start to recognize like everyday people that come in like regulars because then it's not such a hostile environment because you know who you're dealing with that's like the one good thing because like in previous places like I was a hostess at a diner like almost two years ago. There was new people every day. Like I rarely saw any regulars. And it was like constant like anxiety, like, oh, here they come. Like, are they gonna be mean to me? Just like the last people or like <laughs> stuff like that. But like I think within that thing you just within that whole concept you just said, mm -hmm. what's scarier is a regular that will yell at you like a so person true, who yells though. at you and comes back and gets pissed at you again for just breathing like that's scary true like you know that they're gonna be coming back that's what makes it <laughs> that's what makes it bad 
<laughs> That's the scariest part. Literally, I feel like, especially when it comes like retail, mm-hmm. the thing is that you always think, oh, they're not going to come back. They yelled at me once. That means they're not coming back, right? And then, like, a week later, you see them again, and you go into, like, complete fight-or-flight mode. And you're like, no! (laughs) That's literally how it is. Like, with that old guy that I told you, like, he yelled at me, like, the first time I ever searched him, and then he started being nice. I just can't, like, push down the anxiety I feel every time I see him, because I just, I know what he's capable of. So even though now he's kind of nice to me, I'm like, he could snap any minute. <laughs> he could literally snap any minute. The thing about customer service, though, is that majority of the time, like, I, get, I would say a good 85% of the time, it's really not what we did. It's definitely, like, their day has been sucky already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, just by breathing, they're like, so, hmm, maybe I'll snap. <laughs> <laughs> and it's scary because everyone could either have a good day or a bad day and people who are always like there's always that one customer that you surprises you for some reason and you kind of like go like oh thank you for not yelling at me and they're like oh I'm having a good day today and you're like what do you do when you have a bad day literally like even if I have a bad day I wouldn't I wouldn't take it out on someone who I literally don't, don't even know <laughs> like why even like I'm not gonna come home and be like mom you suck because I had a bad day. People are just built, they're built very different. Yes. Very different, like, scarily different. Oh, oh my God. I have a story to tell about work. Story. It's a, okay, bear with me because there's a lot, there's a lot going on. <laughs> so, this is just, this is literally just from yesterday. So I come in. And I think I mentioned it before, but I work at a grocery store deli. We cut cheese meat and we serve like salads, like potato salads and stuff. We don't actually make any sandwiches. I come in and there's an there's a twelve hundred dollar order <laughs> for meat, cheese, and bread. <laughs> Which I I still can't even wrap, <laughs> wrap my head around why anybody on this planet would <laughs> would spend that much that's more than what's in my bank account I literally can't comprehend it I, like at all but you know my my manager she's like preparing all this stuff getting these like trays ready because they ordered them in trays so obviously you have to like roll them up make them presentable whatever so she's like working with like two other employees to get these trays together because I have to like work the counter make the salads and stuff with my other coworkers. <laughs> So she's taking the trays out in like huge shopping carts from the cooler in the back, the ones that had been prepared the night before. And it turns out that between yesterday at like 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. when I came in, somebody knocked the trays to the ground and just like completely destroyed them. And that was the last bit of like cheese and like whatever other product was in it that we had. (laughs) But the thing is, they were inside of a shopping cart. How do they like <laughs> levitate out and like hit the ground? <laughs> I don't know. Cause like she hadn't noticed until she saw that like all the products had been pushed to like one side of the like plastic case that they were in. So they obviously had fallen onto their side. And she was like freaking out. And luckily she noticed like on time before the customer came in. So she had time to like rearrange the tray and like kind of clean it up or whatever and save the product. <laughs> but then they're like asking around and like nobody wants to fess up it was so tense all day because like there were three people who I knew like for a fact that were in before I was between that two hour period and nobody said anything everybody had some sort of alibi I was like though there's no wind no other employees come back there and then they were blaming me and I was like I wasn't even here (laughs) I literally wasn't even here so I spent like my whole six hour shift like going like back and forth between like being calm and then remembering that like my manager is literally checking the cameras to see (laughs) who knocked over these trays and didn't say anything and I left at two o'clock in the afternoon I came in at eight and nobody said anything 
so we still don't know who did it. Ugh. It was really, it was such a wild day. I literally don't understand. Because, like, it would have, okay, yeah, you're going to get in trouble. But it would have been better if you would just fess up in advance so that they know that there there are some trays that they need to fix so the customer doesn't come in and they're like, you're out of my trays. The mystery, the mystery of the tray tipper. I know. I actually have my suspicions. I think I, I think I know who did it, but his alibi was too good. But he, he's a good liar. He's a good mm-hmm. liar. This is, you know, it's this old man who genuinely had me convinced he was in his like late seventies and he's only like sixty years old. Like he's a good liar. <laughs> oh my god. I know, and I was like. I don't know. I just I don't know. Cause then I was thinking like there's this other old lady, but she's like four seven max. There's no way she's lifting these trays <laughs> up and out of these shopping carts. Like literally the shopping cart come like the handles come up to like her chest. I'm like she can't, she didn't do it. <laughs> I know she didn't do it, <laughs> bro. Bro. But also, like, why would you buy that much meat and cheese? Unless you're having, like, a party. But I don't get it. Cause maybe. maybe. <clears throat> that was my other thing. Because, like, when they came in to pick it up, it was, like, maybe, like, 1 o'clock or whatever. And the whole incident kind of happened around, like, 1030. Um, and they had come in early to check up on the order. And we were like, no. <laughs> like, it's not ready. Please come back later. Because we were in the middle of trying to fix everything. But when they came in... They were wearing like, um, like short shorts, like a tank top, and I was like, "So are they just having like a pool party or something?" <laughs> like I, I don't know. Maybe they were gonna change into something more formal later. I don't know. I just I'm think. <laughs> <laughs> I just think if you were to buy that much meat and cheese. Why not just go to a catering company? It's way cheaper. It's way cheaper. Why are you going to a deli to buy meat and cheese for that amount of money? I mean, yes, convenience, but also, like, the meat and cheese is not worth the hype of having, like... <laughs> the... <laughs> That's what I was saying. Like, the, the quality of our product can only go so far. Like, you... I... I hate to say this, but they were white, okay? Like, (laughs) I would be embarrassed to see a $1,200 deduction in my bank account from a grocery store deli. I really would. I really would. (laughs) I just think you're going to pay that much for meat and cheese and bread. Like, go to like a honey-baked ham store or something and get yourself something nice. Exactly. I'm, I can't wait to go in tomorrow and find out if they actually found out who it was. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter now. They already, they already picked up the tray, but I was just thinking, like, it definitely could not have been me because with, with how anxious I am, I would have been, like, crying immediately gone. And I'm like, oh, no, sorry, the tray. Yeah, like, mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Speaking of people doing things and then leaving... There's this whole conundrum within the customer service industry that customers just really don't care if they ruin your day or they like, or they drop something and they just walk away. Like they just think it doesn't exist that we have to clean it up after them or they're full, or we have to full close for them. Like they ruin the whole pile. They throw things across that everyone has like on the store and then they just don't clean it up. I think it's not it's not like their life and it is it isn't like their job but it's like at the end of the day it's really just us spending extra hours where we could be home so cleaning up after their mess (laughs) they're very oh inconsiderate I was actually talking to my friend today about that same kind of thing like because I was a hostess, I became so conscious of, like, my own, like, etiquette when I go to a restaurant or something. So, like, we went out to get food today. 
that it's just like habit now for me to like stack my plates, stack the cups, <laughs> put all the napkins like together, just to make it easier for them to like be able to just pick everything up and go and clean the table faster. Oh yeah. Like, especially when I go to like a Target or I go to like the mall, every time I pick up a, like a piece of clothing, like just like a piece of clothing, like it doesn't even have, it could just be one piece of clothing. And I just have to fold it back. I have to fold it the right way too. Like I'd make sure like it was the right way that they actually fold it the first time. Mm-hmm. And I had to like put it back the right way. Cause I just, I feel so bad. Cause I know they spend so much time folding the clothes. And then when, it cl- when they close, they had to fold it over again. And I'm like, I don't want to be that person. Cause I remember I was that person who had like clean up after everyone's folding catastrophe. And oh my God, just, you get so conscious of just literally everything <laughs> mm-hmm. i know exactly what you mean it's terrible oh. really oh yeah and this is i used to work at like a uh, like a wholesale supermarket so mm-hmm. literally it's like when you leave you have to have all the barcodes out or like when people are scanning stuff for you like i always have like the barcodes up ahead of time so when they have to check my like receipt they could just go beep 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 and then they could just go mm-hmm. but oh my god like people who spend so much extra t- like maybe it's because I used to be that person who used to like do like the you know like the scan thing uh but like it used to frustrate me who was not have like their barcodes out or the barcodes were underneath all like the heavy stuff or like, the barcodes were underneath everything you had to like physically pick up everything to find the barcode and it's anxiety inducing because people don't realize that they time you like when you when you do when you scan when you scan the items the checkout like you're being timed at all times like there's there's like something going off at all time yeah so you have to do it quickly as people do that's why people do it so quickly because you have to like find the barcode and go and barcode and go and barcode and go it's insane (laughs) the pressure Mm -mm. I always, I always do self-checkout, honestly. I don't know if it's, like, a subconscious, like, I just don't want to bother anybody <laughs> with my, like, cart. Just, yeah. It's just faster. We, as a person who has been a cashier before, literally, please use self-checkout. Like, please, as soon as you get out, you're less a problem to us. And it's just, it's simpler that way. If you can, if you can do it without being checked. If you're technology savvy, please, please do a self checkout. Please. If you're 80 years old, educate yourself. I'm kidding. Educate <laughs> yourself. No, I feel so bad. Sometimes I stand in line behind them and they're just, they're just going so slow and they're like trying to get their coupons out. And I'm like, is it even worth it at this point for like a $2 hand soap coupon? <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> Or, 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 I'm just reminded of all the people. Like, if you are people, like, I understand it's really important to have like change with you at all times. Sometimes, mm-hmm. but the, but for me, it's so much harder for me as a cashier to count your coins one by one in front of you. Oof. Like, if you're yeah. having, if you got like a thousand dollars in one dollar bills, maybe maybe go to the ATM and pull out a 20 please for me <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want to count I your totally coins. get what you're saying I totally <laughs> I do. don't want to count your coins I'm so sorry I understand if you're going to get a roll of quarters I'm fine with quarters but when you pull out your 10 year stash of 10 million pennies maybe I don't want to count 10 million today maybe I just don't <laughs> exactly exactly because it's not even like it's it's not even like dimes or something that's easy like 10 20 it's like three dimes a nickel 30 pennies <laughs> like it's just a complete mix of the most <laughs> random change I've gotten like when I used to be a hostess because at that like diner place I also had to like check people out it was so annoying because then you would literally get like two dollar coins and i'm like can i even take this anymore oh it was so annoying so frustrating 
And like, I understand tips because you know, when you get tips, you get $1 like, or $2 or you get $10 or you get $20 if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. And it's just a stack of bills. And I mean, like, I understand the whole thing about like, if you have like money, it's more important to keep that in your wallet just in case you have to like give tips in the future or you have to use it for some other reasons. But I'm just like, if you're having 20 bucks, like in, in dollars in your pocket, why don't you just go to the ATM and just put it in your account and then take out a 20? Because that's literally the same exact thing. And it's easier for us to break down for you. So true. <laughs> well, see, I've gotten into the habit of like not carrying change with me because it's just so much easier to use my card. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing. Like if I need like tips or something, I'll pull it out. But I don't like keep cash on hand anymore. Yeah, me too. I always keep everything on my card. And it's literally, I don't know if because I'm a young kid. I don't know if it's because I'm literally in my 20s. And it's just, it's just a normal thing for us to have <laughs> cards, even though it's like terrible <laughs> when people like steal your confirmation. You basically have your, have to, have your entire life start over again. But it's just so easy to have the, the piece of plastic. You know, I just go zoop, so zoop, insert, <laughs> let go. Literally. <laughs> it's so simple oh yeah yeah it's just like I I don't know I just much prefer the whole like the idea of having the card it's just it's so nice because you get like rewards on stuff (coughs) do you have a credit card yet Mm -mm. just a debit card yeah credit card is a big responsibility but usually when it comes to credit cards, you have those really, like, if you use it everywhere you go, you get, like, you get, like, rewards, and you get, like, cash back, and it's it's one of those adult fun things you get to enjoy if you have, like, a piece of plastic, and you can, like, use it freely without, right. you know, be smart with it, though. Don't, like, just be like, yeah, I'm gonna use this and have infinite cash. Yeah, no. It's not for you to go on a shopping spree, that's for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh my god, speaking of credit cards, yeah. did you ever see the Apple Apple card? I've seen it. I haven't like used or seen anybody use it though. It's made of titanium. It's like metal. Whoa. So when you drop it, it goes. That's so weird. <laughs> Wouldn't that be like kind of heavy? Maybe that defeats the purpose. Oh, it should be like wood, I think. I mean, why? I don't know, actually. But it's just like one of those weird things. It's like, it's free to sign up and stuff like that. I gotta you watch know? this stuff. It's made of metal. It's a metal card. Oh, I see. It's very pretty. I feel like Apple always makes things so convenient, but they make it like when it's too late. Like, I already have a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you would have made this earlier I could have considered but you do have a credit card not a credit card sorry I'm in a debit card oh okay okay yeah yeah debit cards are debit cards are nice when you're like a kid and you're in college then yeah debit cards are where the way to go because it's just to worry about paying it back every month and it's just like it's so nice just just take it out straight from your account Correct. Exactly. Uh, speaking of cards, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I have another retail story to add to the list. Please do. So, when I used to work at the wholesale supermarket, literally, when you have to when you go in, you have to show your card because if you don't show your card, then they can't. We can't. Mm-hmm. We don't know if you are a member or not. People get so pissed about showing their card. Because I don't know if this is just like a thing, but people get so lazy of just, I don't know, opening their wallet and showing a card. Isn't that, it probably should take less than five seconds. If you want to like check, it's just like people get so much energy to go, I don't know, put their keys in their purse, put their wallet in their purse. And you know, put their put their like what is it, keys, wallet, and 
there's something else I'm missing. But there's YouTube with like other oh, phone. And like if you put so much energy into putting stuff in your purse and it takes you like five seconds to take out a card, then why don't you just take out the card? Like I don't understand what what is so impatient within your soul that you cannot take the energy to take out a card as soon as someone is like you know someone asks for you to take out a card like shouldn't you go to sam's go to like sam's or costco so many times you should probably know that people will ask you for your card like i don't i'm just like it's still one of those weird things Ooh, people get so pissed they'll be like why do you have to see my card why do you have to see my card and I'm like, because it's my job. And if I don't do this, I'm going to get fired. Like, it's my job. Like, Literally, though. That's so insane. <laughs> it's so frustrating just to think about it. Like, yeah, if you've been going here and you know that that's the system that's in place, why do you keep asking? It would make it so much easier if you just show your card and then you get in and you go. You would only be fighting at least in my head, it only makes sense for them to be fighting if they didn't have a card and they just wanted to be let in. Exactly. So just got a card. <laughs> just exactly. Got a card. And they're like, they're like, oh, I don't have it with me. And I'm like, okay, you could go over there and go get a temporary one because we give out temporary ones. You know, if you don't have it, I mean, we have your code in the account. We have it in your system. We have it in our system. Right. Like. People are people so... just like oh insane. Just a whole list of people who like are like, are you racist? Are you racist for wanting to check my card? And it's like, good God, not this again. I I don't get paid enough. I don't get paid enough. I would start speaking in Spanish straight up. Oh, I'd be like, sorry, I have no idea what you're saying, and they'll be like. So am I in? <laughs> oh yeah, and they would. Oh my god. Oh my god, that just reminded me of something that really hurts me, like mm-hmm. a pet peeve, like a really really bad pet peeve. So when you're a cashier, mm-hmm. or when I was a cashier, you know, sometimes you can't like, sometimes the barcode doesn't work, or you know, things just you know, system doesn't really load things, or things have limits and stuff like that. And they're like, so is it free? So is it free? No! (laughs) No! Nothing is free, bestie. Nothing is free. What? I'm having technical difficulties, ma'am. Karen. Like, no, it is not free. Maybe you should probably help me try to figure out the system actually is trying to, like, I have to put the numbers manually in now because you're you pick oh the people who don't I've gotten like I said Reed Dell has made me so 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 like oh I just I have to be so specific about things I do now because mm-hmm. I know the pain that goes into being working at retail right oh, the people who go all the way to the checkout and then they don't pick the, the item with the barcode or the barcode suddenly falls out or the barcode has something on it and you can't scan it. And then we have to go back and get another one for them. Oh, uh, like if you're going to check that out, maybe, I don't know, check the price. People are so conscious about price. Like, I, I don't think that was $5.99. It said on the sign it was $4.95. And I'm like, you checked the wrong sign. It was the one for the item on top of it. Like, ah! <laughs> that literally irks me so bad because <laughs> yesterday I had a similar experience with like literally got to be like the most cheapo <laughs> customer I've ever encountered in my life. Because like I said, at the deli, we sell like pre-made salads. So this lady, she wanted... <clears throat> excuse me this um like amish macaroni salad it's 3.49 a pound <laughs> like literally four dollars for just a pound a pound of salad that that's like a lot and i weighed it and you know you put it in a container and you tear it 
So it tries its best to take off the weight of that container. So you're just getting the salad on the scale. And it, it literally came out to like 438. And she was going to die right then and there in that deli. She was like, but, but it says here it's 340. Like, are you sure? It says it's 349. But like, is this a pound? And I'm like, it's $4. It's literally like $5. Like $5. Just, just take it. Like, please just go. There's no way you're upset over an extra couple of cents. It's, it's really mind boggling because that's all she wanted. It's not like she got like cheese and meat and like all that. Like she literally just came for that salad. And I was like, you can't, you can't like drop a $5 <laughs> for this. Like, no. Literally, oh my God. It's just one of those weird things that irks me is people don't look specifically at the price. Like, it's like $4 a pound, right? And they think it's like a pound is so much bigger than they actually think it is. And like, this was supposed to be $4.95 a pound. Why is it $4.95 a pound? Like, <laughs> it comes <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> god it's or, like oh god i was just thinking about like i was just thinking about uh, the people who think coupons are forever the people who are like i have to use this coupon and i was like man man it expired like last october you can't use that anymore they're like I thought this was supposed to be, I thought it doesn't say expiration date on it. And this literally says it like right there, like right there. Oh my God. Or return policies or return policies. (laughs) People will literally try to return stuff like seven months after the fact. And it's like, you need to stop. You need to stop. Oh my God. Has anyone ever tried to, like, return meat? Because I feel like that's... We get returns all the time. So they'll be like, oh, like, this is old. (laughs) And I'm like, you literally came to pick it up, like, six hours after. (laughs) This is old. This isn't fresh. (laughs) Like, come on. Of course it isn't fresh. It's the supermarket. We had to leave it out for other people to eat. (laughs) Like, we're not going to make it fresh for you. Or they're, they'll literally put in a kiosk order because we have we have different ways of people ordering. So like you can come up to the counter and order. You can put in an order on the little kiosk and then we get it on a ticket and put it together. So while you're shopping, we'll put it together and then it announces the number whenever it's done. Or you can place like a mobile order or place an order through the direct app, which is like you order all of your groceries and then you like curbside pickup that way. So literally people will place their order and we put it in like a little refrigerated like little bin with their number on the paper. And people will be like, well, this isn't cut thin enough. And I'm like, you literally wrote how thick you wanted to cut on the paper. That's what it is. <laughs> you order it. <laughs> like, or they'll be like, yeah, I like I want it like sandwich slice I don't want it deli slice and I'm like you realize that's the, that's the same thing <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's literally the same thing or the worst I, I literally feel like committing a crime every time I hear these words <laughs> well, customer, like I'm cutting something at like a paper thin thickness and then they'll be like, can you go thinner? <laughs> oh my and god, that reminds me. Oh my god, that reminds me of that Spongebob meme. The one where it's like the apple, but the apple is like cut, like transparent. That's literally what it is. When they ask for something paper thin, I try to make it transparent. And like, it's like a dial that you rotate to like open and close a blade. And for me to do something paper thin, I'm between like zero or like 0.5 or like between that. If I turn it any closer to zero, I'm just going to turn it off. Like, I can't go thinner. I literally can't go thinner. Like, you you need to stop. You cut it yourself. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> cut it yourself. 
I usually I usually fake them out. I'll literally just go back, pretend I moved it, and <laughs> cut the same exact slice and bring it back to them. And they always say, like, oh, that's great. <laughs> I have to fake them out because I can't I can't be doing this. The only customer that I will ever like take any crap from. We have one customer that comes in once a month. He's deaf. So he writes his order like on a piece of paper. And he usually orders like six to ten pounds of product. That's the only guy I'll take it from. He's such a nice guy, you know, he's trying his best to live in a society that's it's not really built for his needs like he can't really do grocery shopping that well but everybody else no oh yeah i, I always feel it. terrible yeah i just i remember i always felt so terrible and people who are like blind or deaf they would come in and they would do asl or they would like they wouldn't know they would say that they couldn't hear and I would just let them in. Like, I, I would just let them in. Like, I just let them do whatever they wanted. Because it just, like, I felt I felt like they needed that extra treatment. You know, like, they needed that extra treatment just to feel a little more human. Exactly. Well, I also have, do you, I'm, I'm sure you have, but do you have those customers that, like, come in and they start telling you, like, everything about their lives? And it's like, I, I'm, I'm just here to serve you, like, five minutes max. I'm not here to talk. <laughs> And it's always like a sweet old lady. It's always like this sweet, like six year old grandma. And she's like, So today I went to go see my great grandson. He's like, He's like, Would I see a photo of him? I have him on my, uh, on my good old, uh, um, um, phone. And it's like this, like, iPhone 4 that's like a hand me down from like her, like her, like her, 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 like, her like, grandson. <laughs> and it's like, like old iphone 4 she's like oh. trying to look through it she's like would you like to see my great grandson and i was like yeah, sure <laughs> oh my god i literally i literally sometimes have these ladies come in who are like trying to explain to me like how thick they want their stuff sliced and they're like yeah like he doesn't like it too thin and i'm like who is he <laughs> I literally don't know who you're talking about right now. <laughs> it's so funny because I just go along with it. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, of course, like, I'll, you know, I'll slice it and let you see a slice and you tell me if that's what you want. But I, in my head, I'm like, I have no idea who that man is. <laughs> or like crazy. throw names. Or like you throw names like, oh, my God, so Jack. And I was like, I don't know who Jack is. <laughs> Jack who? <laughs> literally i can't oh my god retail it's is a trick. so funny like in the moment you're like suffering a lot but when you look back on it it's so funny oh my god it's so bad that it's funny it's it's terrible how entitled people think they are it's so entitled people people are like they're so entitled think like just because we work here that we should they should we should do everything for them exactly like you have no idea what i've been through little old lady you can't come <laughs> oh, at me. oh my god that reminded me mm. so i was um this was during a pandemic so i was helping like wipe down carts and stuff like that mm. and um well pandemic's still going on but you know what i mean like when the pandemic was terrible mm. and and there's this lady and this like really like small Latinx lady and I was like she's so cute and she was like so can you talk to that cart guy can you talk to that cart guy um I need to go ask him to help me load my car and I was like and I was like sure I'll help you and he's like right behind me he's like literally like, right behind me <laughs> and I was like I, I I I I was nice of course I was nice but like after she left I was like why can't that lady just ask him herself <laughs> he's literally right behind me I Stop promise her, I'm gonna cry. I'm like why couldn't she just ask him herself I'm not her daughter <laughs> that is so funny I feel bad but that's so funny 
<laughs> why? Literally, it was why? He was literally on his phone, too. Like, he was not busy. He was not busy at all. Menace. <laughs> Every customer that comes in is a menace to society, bro. <laughs> the different types of people you meet in a day at retail or a retail weekend like I feel like that should be required of all people in society like you have to experience a retail weekend at least once in your life you know you know because it's insane like 10,000 people come in all at once and they all want the same exact thing Mm -hmm. oh my god like a black friday no thank you or like a Black Friday, literally, <laughs> literally. Someone has to work a Black Friday at least once in their life. Oh, yeah. it's terrible. Black Fridays are very, very no bueno. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, so I had I had this question. I don't know if it's because people say different it differently across the country. Mm-hmm. But you know how you go into Sam's or Costco and they have like that area with like the food mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. the drinks and stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you call that? Like a like a cafeteria type. It is a cafeteria, isn't it? People say the most weirdest stuff. They call it the they call it a deli. <laughs> that's, that's weird. Deli, like. Can you direct me to the deli? And of course, I think like you know, like the meat in the back. But no, they're like, I need to go in and buy my. I want to buy my uh, my ice cream sundae at the deli. <laughs> like that is a deli, ma'am. <laughs> it's a cafeteria. Like it's an eatery. Like it's a. Or if someone called a diner once, they're like, oh, is, oh can you direct me to the diner? <laughs> Why? They're like <laughs> completely different things. That's like upsetting. <laughs> like, I I I'm thought excited. maybe it was a Midwest thing that they call it the deli, or like maybe like an East Coast thing, or something. But you're right there. So the fact that you don't call it a deli is basically just their fault. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god! Just people call it the deli. Like I just need to get my ice cream sundae. I don't even pizza from the deli. Is this the deli? Can you drink with the deli? Like <laughs> it's not the deli. It's not a deli, ma'am. Cuckoo people. This is, this, is a, this is a Sam's Club. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I'm triggered just at the just at the thought. <laughs> I need a moment of silence to recover from the the stress that we've just gone through. Oh, just the amount of retail stories that could be said right now is way too many, and I. I just want to shout out to all the retail employees right now who are going through it. You are valid and you're going through it and you're not alone, I promise. Um, you're going through my guy. We do. Oh my God. It's insane because every day is a new adventure. Like literally, you go in, you're like, this today can make sure be a good day. I'm actually going to see my friends because I think that retails you never like, sometimes you see your friends, but you don't see your friends. Oh. That's the thing, like, I like working with people that I enjoy working with, like, that make the environment a good place, but then when they don't come into work, I'm like, this is the worst day of my life. (laughs) Exactly, and time goes by so much slower when you don't have your friends with you. Sure, for sure. Man. I feel like that so much of my energy was just drained. Oh my god. I mean, I think everyone should go through retail at some point in their life. Like just like first job or like 
you need some like uh, I don't want, I wouldn't recommend my worst enemy actually <laughs> to be really quite frank with you but it's definitely like it needs a need experience because it really humbles you it really makes you so conscious of every single thing you're doing but it's like for a good reason you know mm -hmm. absolutely yeah I was talking with a security guy this is during the pandemic and everything and um and I was like have you done retail before and he's like no and I was like oh, must be nice <laughs> must be nice to live your entire yeah. life without doing retail at one point in your life oh like 85 percent of jobs I feel like are retail at this point at least jobs available to those like in college or like high school yeah precisely like and they don't pay much either you have to worry about because oh my god I just I feel bad for people who go to the retail and they have like families at home and they have to pay for their family to take care of their family with that minute with that amount of money which is like so little I'm grateful okay. I have a family to like pay for all the other expenses that I need to pay for yeah. and I can still like live you know exactly like imagine having a child and having to do retail oh. mm -mm. Mm -mm. that is not that is not good it's it's it needs to be paid so much more for the amount of shit we have to go through. It's explicit, so it's okay to say shit. <laughs> Whole other breed. Whole other breed. Sky mm. queen. Oh my god. What a time. Oh my god. Like I physically feel so exhausting about all the all the mess that I had to like deal with. Oh my god, people well, vomiting in the middle of the aisles. Oh, oh my god. I can't even imagine. Oh my god, I just reminded the most disgusting thing that's ever happened to me at a retail job. Oh god. This, <laughs> so, this was when I was wiping down carts during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and people would just leave their child's diaper in the cart and we had to pick That's that up kidding. we had to pick that up and throw it away for them people would leave their dirty dirty diapers in the cart or leave uneaten food uneaten food like at some point i saw i saw uneaten food on a cart that wasn't even clean and it had maggots in it. And I was like, I'm not touching this. <laughs> I would die. I would straight up just pass away. Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> Trauma. And the thing is that they also pull the racism card like so much. It looks to the point where it's like, I breathe. And they're like, are you racist? And I'm like, no. I'm doing what's required of me at this job, ma'am. Like, exactly. <laughs> I promise. I am trying my best. I'm trying my best. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my god. It's like, you don't even know me, bro. What's wrong with you? Exactly. Like, if you knew me for, like, more than this second right now that we're spending time together. Like, in this second that you're here with me right now. Like, you would know that I am genuinely a pretty, like, I, I just like I'm a good person. Like, I feel like I'm dead. Like, I'm genuinely, like, okay with the person that I am today. Yeah, oh. a great person. I just like, oh my god, will piss me off for no reason. And I can't get pissed off because I'm pissed off, and that makes me the bad person. And I can't, you know, I can't fight back because that will get me fired. That's so toxic. That is so toxic. 
It literally is the fact that they're like, the customer comes first. And I'm like, well, what if the customer is straight up wrong? <laughs> what if the customer is straight up wrong? Precisely. Like, I'm about to throw hands with this customer. Oh, my God. Oh, and we can't fight back either. We have to take it. We have to take it and apologize. We have to take it and apologize. Straight up, Connery. <laughs> we have to take it and apologize I think I'm sorry I'm sorry having this experience right now even though you're a terrible person the things you gotta go through I think it takes a lot of strength I really do so much strength especially on Coupon days when like all the prizes go down, people swarm. They swarm into the store. Yeah. Absolutely. And then they and then they fight with other people. Like, have you ever seen a fight within customers? Mm-hmm. It's so scary. It literally is like, whoa there. Please calm down and please don't like involve me in any way. Like it literally should not be so stressful but it is oh my god and people and the thing is that your social life completely falters it completely goes down because you literally get when you get home you just want to crash you just want to go home and eat and then just sleep like that's that's the whole like the just the energy that's required is too much and your friends are like how are you where have you been and then you say that you're always busy because you're always tired exactly exactly mm. bro what the heck what the heck honestly it's so weird because like you can never you can never complain you just gotta you really just gotta deal with it mm-hmm. yep i mean i guess you could complain to like your co-workers or something but they don't care they don't care yeah or you make the best friends possible in your workplace when you have when you have like like moments where you both are pissed Mm -hmm. oh my god that's a bonding experience you definitely bond when you're going through something absolutely oh yeah it never gets easier either you can have all the experience being there for like five years and you would still feel like you're not ready to go to work (laughs) so true (sighs) tiring 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 it truly is kudos to everybody i respect every single person who gets through a day at retail honestly it's not easy it is not easy at all not at all do you have any more stories to ask the pile before we close this out? Um, I don't think so, but what I will say is, I guess this, I guess this would have to lead to the story time. <laughs> Be careful who you work with. Don't open up too quick. Don't be too friendly. You know, be an observer, gauge the situation and the person that you're dealing with because there are some weird people out there and they might develop very intense one-sided crushes on you. What? I need to know. Wait, what? I... Oh my God, the tea is boiling. All right, I'll try, I'll try to make it quick because a lot went down, but you know, we just got to get to the good stuff. Male coworker last year because this is when I like first started at the deli I was working mostly evening shifts 
this male coworker of mine is a year older than me. We were getting along. Very similar interests, similar humor. Um, I saw him as like a brother, but I never had like an older brother. Clearly, <laughs> that's not how I was being seen. He asked me to hang out. And you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like I'm I'm a very independent person. And I like find it hard to hang out sometimes with people because I'm also very like introverted and awkward. <laughs> so I was already kind of weary about him. We hadn't known each other that long, and he didn't know me. And I was like, "Why do you want to hang out?" But I guess I'll just say yes. So I brought a knife, just in case, because <laughs> I'm a very anxious person, and you know I like to overthink. But I was like, you know what? Just in case, even though you know we're just going bowling, we're just going to eat something. It's going to be fine we're eating and he was talking and he mentioned that we were on a date mm-hmm. and I was like this isn't a date we're, we're just hanging out and you know I said it like in the nicest way possible and he just kind of laughed it off so I was like okay that's fine we have another co-worker who's like one of my close friends now so I've been working there for like almost a year who was also friends with him at the time, we went, the three of us, to her house to watch a movie with her brother. You know, it was goody, goody, whatever. This guy's whole personality is the fact that he's an alcoholic. So what did he do when watching the movie? Drink. The only one who got, like, completely shit-faced. And everything, you know, from there, he just started, like, batting off this confession to me. Like he was saying how like he grew his hair out for me, which he literally doesn't even like doesn't maintain any aspect of himself, wears the same outfit like every time. <laughs> but he he thought he was like impre- he was doing the best to impress me. Like he didn't even like no showering. And I was like, whoa. So he grew out his hair apparently for me. He just kept saying, like, I was so like pretty, and I'm sitting there like, please just stop talking like about me to me, like just stop. Don't get close to me. <laughs> then my friend noticed that I was uncomfortable. So she was like, okay, like, I'm going to stay with him and I'll get my brother to take you outside to your car so you can go. Because it's like almost 10 o'clock. And I was like, mm, I got to go. As I'm leaving, this man starts crying. <laughs> he was like, oh, no, like, I pushed her away. I made her leave. <laughs> my friend was like I mean yeah but like let's just not think about it like you know we need to get you home and he was like no like and he came to me and he was like I will pay you like $60 to stay like oh my god I'm going home so I go home and of course the next day I have to work with him (laughs) so I'm at work and he comes in he's like oh like I should have never done that um, meaning he should have never gotten drunk. He wasn't really addressing the whole, like, what, what went down. And then, like, later on, he was like, oh, like, I'll buy you something to make up for it. Like, I'll buy you a drink. And I was like, no. No. I'm like, I don't, I don't want absolutely anything from you. But he just kept insisting, and I got so mad, because I was like, when I say no, I mean no. So then I literally just, like, changed my schedule, and I never worked another night shift. <laughs> like, never again. So he still works there and I've seen him because I get off at two and he comes in at two. So I have no choice but to see him sometimes. And like, he literally tries to start up a conversation and I'm like, nope. He's still trying. He's still trying. It's been like nine months. He's still trying. And I'm like, did, did we not learn? It's not going to make it any better that you waited like nine months to even address the situation again. Because he apologized, quote unquote, oh. at, at work. He was like, I'm sorry, like, I guess. And I was like, you're sorry? I literally told him, I was like, I don't want, I, I really don't want to keep talking about this. I literally told him, because of course, he always works better whenever he thinks that I'm going to be in the work. He always does everything he has to do, but when I'm not there, then he like, lazies away and does whatever he wants and goes on his phone 
I'm like, you're not impressed with anybody. I literally don't care what you do. Oh my god. <sighs> what a day. What a what a, a month that was. Oh my god. I physically feel so bad for you. <laughs> yeah, I heard recently that he finally well here here's the thing. That situation was like kind of traumatic. I think more so for me because I already had past uncomfortable situations with people who drink. So that's what made it worse for me. And as a person, he's not any better. If he hadn't done that, I still wouldn't want to be with him anyway. <laughs> like he's never he's he no schooling never wants to leave that town and i'm like i gotta get out of here can't drive i'm like no like we literally drove to a town i would say it's like 15 20 minutes away from where i live to go eat something just like have you ever been here i've been here like 300 times in the past like two years but no he's been here like once and i'm like doesn't go anywhere but i heard recently that he got his light he's getting his license and i was like please nobody tell him that i'm going to school (laughs) don't let this man find out because i'll you know those blue lights on campus that say like emergency (laughs) i will hit that button so fast (laughs) if this man shows up Yeah, the whole deli knows, which is the funniest part. I don't think he knows that anybody knows because I didn't, I didn't tell anybody. My friend did. She told the one manager, and then he talked so much. So everybody, everybody just found out. Oh my god! I just, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Oh my it's all god! Good. It took me a while, but I find it funny now. I feel like I. I needed to like tell other people and then just kind of laugh it off with them. It feels better when I tell somebody about what happened. Oh my god. If it were me, I wouldn't even like say yes. I wouldn't even have gone on. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't have brought the knife. I'd been like, I'm not going with you anywhere. <laughs> That's literally what I should have said. I don't understand. I mean, I guess I'm too much of a people pleaser. So I said yes, because I kind of felt bad. And like, he asked me at work. And I was like, in front of the other employees? Like, I don't have a chance to say no. Oh my God. But he he literally doesn't talk to me. And I'm like, good. Because I'm not going to say anything bad. Sounds so harsh. Honestly, though, oh my god, oh my god, I just I understand the whole like introverted awkward thing, because I would if someone ever came to me and like try to like hit on me that way, I would just quit the job. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> literally though, I'm so grateful that I have the option to create my own schedule at school because changing my schedule gave me the excuse that I couldn't work in the afternoons anymore like best thing to happen to me bro for real oh my god yeah honestly yeah I'd probably do the same I would try to avoid him at all costs I would just I would just go off the grid only do only do day shift like you do Uh, I would do anything anything to leave Exactly. Can't oh. wait for my last day here for there. And then you're gonna go to you're gonna go visit your family and then go to and then go back to school. Oh my god, I'm going to school. I am gonna go back to school. I'm excited. I uh, I still don't really know what I'm gonna bring with me yet. I have to like pack and do all this stuff when I get back from Puerto Rico. That's the worst part is the packing. (laughs) 
It really is. I don't like packing. Like I always pack last minute for um <laughs> trips and stuff. Yeah. Alright, we can the podcast here. I'm ready. Thank you very All much, right. everybody. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye bye.